Hey, what's up guys? How you doing? Welcome to another tutorial from Momentum Productions. Uh, today I have a really important video for you today and it's all about color correction and specifically with DJI products. And today we're going to be focusing on color correcting the X3 camera from the DJI Inspire 1. Now this is the same exact camera that, you, that is used on the DJI Osmo. So uh, pay close attention because uh, this is going to get really, really good and informative. And it's going to really transform your footage from amateur looking footage to cinematic and beautiful looking footage. So I have a clip here that I shot in San Francisco. Let me put it, uh, pull it up here. And uh, let's have a look at this shot. All right, so uh, what's going to happen here? Um, yeah, this was this was shot um, in San Francisco, and I think it's called Times Square, or something Square. Um, so it's like right in the heart, right in the heart of San Francisco. So I got this shot there. Um, even though the picture quality looks amazing, and I actually really do like the look of it uh, raw out of the camera, there are still some things we can do to this footage to make it look more cinematic. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and open up Final Cut. I already have a library set up here for this tutorial, so I'm going to go ahead and open it up from there. Alrighty then, so let me just uh, name this project Color Correction Tutorial. All right. Now, um, I did use I, I I I used to edit on Sony Vegas Pro um, because I am working off of a Mac. Uh, so I have a boot camp installed in the system, so I have both Windows and Mac software. Uh, but I made the switch to Final Cut Pro because I feel like it's a lot easier to edit on Final Cut Pro 10. Um, the, the rendering is literally a third of the time, literally, literally like one third of the time that is needed to render in Vegas, Final Cut does like, uh, redo, redo. Um, I switched to Final Cut Pro 10 because it takes one third of the time to render compared to Sony Vegas Pro and compared to uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. So I really love working with Final Cut and plus uh, a lot of third party software plugins are offered for uh, Final Cut Pro but so so as for you know Sony and Premiere but for Final Cut I'm, I'm just so happy with it. Anyway enough talk more action let's go ahead and import our footage here uh, I can close the preview clip I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, drag and drop that clip into uh, my events panel here. All right, and here we are. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop it into our storyline. All right, so let's trim off the fat. You know, I, I hover here for a little bit. Let me start already at a dynamic movement here so we can get more of a cinematic look. And I can, okay, don't stop. Uh, trim the fat here a little bit. All right, so one of the best plugins I feel like for color correction that there is out there is called Magic Bullet Looks. Um, if you type it in on Google, you can find where to purchase this um, plugin. But good news for those of you who don't want to spend money on color correction software, later on in this tutorial, I will show you how to color correct without needing. Um, third-party software plugins. All right, so first off, let's go ahead and start off with Magic Bullet Looks. We can ha we have a, a few um, uh, basic plugins here that we can modify. Um, what's really awesome about Final Cut is that it gives you a preview of what plugin will look like or effect will look like in your footage. So here's one that actually looks great. Uh, let's take a look at Cosmo just hover over the mouse, not really much there, so we might have to um, add some color in there. Um, here's another one, we'll need to add some color and Mojo. Mojo looks fantastic too. This looks like it was, um, you know, if we desaturate some of the greens, because the greens are really, really saturated in this effect, um, we need to desaturate the greens um, to make it look more like the matrix, you know, the matrix was a little like bluish like you know that that kind of color and then we have magic bullet film which just gives it that really nice organic film touch makes it look like this whole thing was shot on real film and this is actually one of the presets that I use the most 
because I love the look of film and this is really close to the look of film. Again, we just need to desaturate the greens a little bit to make it look more authentic. So let's go ahead and use this uh, preset here. So I'm going to drag and drop it onto the clip. I'm going to go to my inspector here and we can mess around with the color temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, and saturation. First off, with this clip, I'm very, very happy with the, with the contrast. I'm happy with the exposure. Uh, what I really want to focus on is the saturation and tint and perhaps even the color temperature. So let's mess with the saturation since I said that the greens were a little bit too saturated. So let's lessen the saturation just a little bit. Bring the slider down to the left. There we go. That makes a really, really nice cinematic look compared to this where it was just way, the greens were just way too saturated. That's what it looked like before, and this is what I'm going to have it look like now. Just maybe a little bit more, just like that. The greens are way less saturated, in the, and it looks more authentic, like it was actually shot on film. Now, uh, we can also mess with the color temperature, you know, in other words, the white balance. Um, so, let's see what happens when we bring it up. We make it warmer, and left when we make it colder. Um, I'm actually pretty happy with it being right, let's see what it looked like in the center. In the center, maybe it's a little bit too warm, so let's bring it down to the left. Okay, there we go. Wow, that's nice. That really looks like film, you guys. And we have a, a few, um, you know, Magic Bullet Looks did a great job in uh, replicating Kodak and Fujifilm films. Um, so they replicated the color uh, digitally. So this makes the plugin very, very powerful because it really uh, makes your footage pop, and it makes it look like it's really like like it was shot on film. So you can mess with the different presets they have here. Um, you know, you can mess around. They're 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 quite different, as you can see. They're subtle adjustments, but you can totally see the difference. But I'm going to stick with Kodak 2383. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so yeah, there you go. And then uh, let's see what tint does. Let's bring it to the right. Okay, we have a pinkish tint. Let's bring it down to the left. And we have a greenish tint. I actually was pretty happy where it was, so I'm going to keep it right in the center. Skin tone, we don't need to worry about that since we're not focusing on skin. Vintage and modern look. Okay, so this is a very, very important one. So let's mess with this slider to see if we can actually make this picture look better. Bring it to the right. Ooh, that's very nice. That looks actually pretty vintage. Let's bring it down to the left. It's a little too much. I like the look of it going to the right, so let's bring it to the right just a little bit, not too much. Um, film naturally has grain, so it's okay if we add a little bit of grain to make it more look more film-like. So we can bring the slider just a little bit to the right. Uh, vignetting uh, basically makes the corners of the image look darker. A little bit of vignetting, which is great. It makes it really film-like. And that's about it. That's all... Um, we need to focus on. And you have another preset here, uh, flat log and video. Um, now the difference between flat and log, I don't know what the exact difference is because log is basically flat footage. Um, log actually, when you shoot on D-log, um, it really flattens out the colors and brings in more dynamic range. Uh, I hate shooting on D-Log because the X3 camera really has no very little dynamic range. So what I do, I keep the D-Log set to off and I just shoot in flat colors. Um, you know, bringing, going into the color settings in the DJI Go app and just making sure that everything is set to zero in the color options. And D-Log just makes it, um, it actually brings up the exposure just a little bit. Um, and makes everything else flat, but I just really didn't like the performance of D-Log when I imported into uh, different NLE editing software. So I'm just going to keep shooting it in flat. Um, but the preset here, I don't know what it does differently. As you can see, it looks like uh, the contrast goes up 
when I click on log and when I go on flat the contrast there's a lot less contrast but I really like the look of flat here uh, when I go to log it just looks like there's too much contrast but again you can you can fix that here in the slider but I'm gonna keep it on flat because I really like the look of that video I'm assuming is gonna look a lot brighter it actually looks wow it looks a lot flatter um, no I don't want that look uh, I like flat more but yeah, you know what? It did actually make everything, the exposure went up quite a bit. So, no, I'm going to keep it at flat. All right. So, um, one last thing here that I would like to add is a letterbox effect because every cinema has that letterbox effect. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my effects panel here, click on all, search for letterbox, and drag and drop the letterbox and uh, we can minimize the magic bullet film and go to letterbox and just increase the border size and we have a pretty cool film like experience here obviously the preview box you know there's going to be a lot of aliasing because it's not processed so when this video is processed it'll, it'll look very crisp without any aliasing but yeah I mean compared to what it was I'm going to show you what it looks like with no effects. You guys will see the difference. Look at the difference. Right? It looks way more cinematic, like a Hollywood production film. Um, you know, this just looks like video, like homemade video. This looks like it was shot in a, in a multi-million dollar production. So, you know, look, color correction is everything, guys. All right, so let's say you don't have Magic Bullet Film or you just don't want to pay the few hundred dollars, the few hundred dollars uh, that it's worth. Uh, there's uh, another turnaround that we can do. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and delete these effects. Uh, Letterbox is built into Final Cut, so we'll just leave it there. Uh, so what we can do, we can go ahead and uh, type into the search box of the effects panel, color correction. Oh, it's actually right here. All right, we just drag and drop it here. All right, so in color correction, I really, to make it more cinematic-like, I click on the color board here. And what I like to do, first off, I want to mess with the saturation. Again, the video, the raw video that came out of the X3 camera just made everything a little too saturated for my liking. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to mess uh, with this slider here, desaturate the greens a little bit, all right, compared to up here where you can just see all the greens just very, you know, they're too, they're too green. So I'm bringing down the slider just a little bit here, making a little bit, making it a little bit more flat. Mess with the middle slider here, this is a mid-tones. All right, again, bringing it up is going to saturate a little bit more, bringing it down is going to make it pretty flat. That's a little too flat for my liking, so I'm going to keep it right in the center. And here we have the high tones. Again, it's going to add a little bit more saturation to the whites and brighter colors of the footage. You know what? I'm going to keep it where it's at. Pretty happy like that. Exposure, we don't need to mess with, but in case you want to mess with the shadows, exposures, and stuff like that, you can do so here. Um, but I was pretty happy with the exposure of this shot, so I'm not going to mess with it. Color. Um, to make it more like the matrix, you know, you want to add like a bluish tint. So we want to mess with this slider. So you can add a little bit of a bluish tint. Oh, wow, look at that. Look at that. I mean, let's take a look at the before and after, guys. Before, after, before, after. It's a lot cooler and it's a lot, um, you know, a lot more blues, a lot less saturation and it just looks like it was shot on film uh, but we can do some more to make it look more uh, authentic uh, we can actually desaturate the greens even farther but that makes the footage look pink we don't want that let's keep it where it was mess with the blues and now we're going towards the look we had with the um, closer to what we had with the magic bullet um, the magic bullet was actually a little bit warmer than this. There we go. 
Now, obviously, Magic Bullet, um, the plugin actually works really, really well with footage. Uh, that's why it's an expensive plugin. So it, it really takes in a lot of data in the footage, and it really manipulates the colors very well. Color corrector is actually very, very primitive, but it can still get you decent results if you know how to play with the sliders. And you can always add, um, you know, you can always add more effects to make it more film-like. Now, if you noticed in Magic Bullet Film, that plugin, they had an add noise slider. So here's another effect that's built in to uh, Final Cut, add noise. Uh, film naturally has noise, so we can add a little bit of noise, a little bit of grain into the footage to make it look more like film. Add a little bit more. TV static, we have a few here. Film grain, Gaussian noise, film grain. That's what we want. Click on that. Now, if you notice, the letter box is affected as well. So I'm going to show you how we can fix that a little later on in the tutorial. But as you can see, we have maybe a little bit too much grain. And there we go. That actually looks very nice. That looks very nice. Cool. All right, so the add noise effect bring it up above the letter box it no longer affects the letter box this is the most uh, this is what we call primary and secondary effects uh, whatever's on the top is the most dominant effect and whatever's on the bottom is the least dominant so since add noise is on top and letter box is on the bottom priority goes to add noise and letter box just goes right underneath it that's why uh, we had the switch here. So if I drag add noise under letterbox, um, it will affect the whole entire video clip. But if add noise is brought on top of letterbox, it goes you know within the borders of the letterbox. But here's how cool cinematic footage looks like. And again, the alias thing will go away once you render and process the footage. All right, awesome. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please comment below or email me at info at capturethemomentum.com. If you like these sort of tutorials, how I like to edit my footage, please, you know, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel, and I would love to do more of these videos for you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.